Hi, I'm Jim Bergman with TrueTac Tools, and well, I've been watching the uh, posts go on uh, HVAC talk, go on and on about adjusting fuel pressures and setting input and setting up a furnace. And well, I thought I'd just put some of this stuff to rest because, uh, quite frankly, I'm getting a little tired of seeing uh, bad information uh, put out there, and I wanted to make sure that uh, at least somewhere along the along the line, you guys see how to properly commission a uh, gas furnace. I've got a brand new Ream. Uh, contour 90 plus furnace here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up the uh, the fuel pressure to the manufacturer's three and a half inches. We're going to go ahead and clock the meter, verify our input. We're going to see if the input's correct on this. We're going to do some temperature rise checks and some airflow checks. Uh, and this one's pretty nice because it's uh, it's an ECM and it's got a programmable or the uh, communicating thermostat, so we can actually take a look at. Uh, you know what the temperature rise is and what the airflow is right on the thermostat and so we'll take a look at what the output is at 100% um, then we'll uh, if there's any additional commissioning procedures that need to be done which I've sort of done some preliminary checking on this it's uh, got the factory orifices in it that are rated for uh, 1075 BTUs and the nominal heat content of the gas right here in Ohio is running 1025 BTUs so I have a gut feeling we're going to have to change orifices on this, but we'll go ahead and set it up the way the manufacturer says. We'll do some testing, some combustion analysis, and then let you guys just see the results firsthand. All right. So what we have here is uh, the contour. It's a it's actually a full modulation 90 plus, and it goes down from, I believe, 30 percent up to 100 percent of full fire. And I've hooked a uh, a pressure tap up here for the manifold pressure. Um, we're going to go ahead and set the furnace up on high fire and uh, we're going to uh, do that right at the thermostat and I'm going to go ahead and measure the manifold pressure. I have a, a Testo, uh, Testo 510 manometer right here that we're going to be measuring the fuel pressure with and uh, real nice, real easy to use, accurate instrument. I don't think anybody will deny that. And then I'm using a Testo 330 uh, long life graphic analyzer and we'll do the combustion testing and stuff on that. So uh, let me get the rest of this set up here. We'll get it fired up and we'll get some initial test results. Okay, so I've got the thermostat all set up here, and uh, what I did is I set the fixed firing rate up here to 100%, and uh, let me zoom in there so you can see that. I got the fixed firing rate set up to 100%, so we can see what our uh, what our fuel pressure is back down at the uh, furnace. All right, so uh, this is the factory setting. It's at uh, running about. Oops, my manometer hose got kinked there for a second. It's running about 3.2, 3.18, 3.19 inches of water column uh, from the factory. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to adjust that up a little bit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take this up to three and a half inches of water column, and uh, it's got a high fire adjustment screw right here. I'm adjusting on the side, and we're at 3.5 exactly. All right, and we're going to go ahead and do a combustion analysis to see where we're at. Now, normally, you know we. We do our final combustion analysis with the door on because that will affect the operation. But what I want to show you here is uh, you know, we're going to do everything with the door off on here until we do the final test. And uh, so we can just look at the combustion test results in, in, the, in the interest of time. All right, second of hand shooting here. We got the, uh, we got the analyzer set up. I got the, the probe uh, fixed in the stack and the, the horn pushed in. I've got the uh, the furnace running on full fire here and um, we've got the manometer hooked up and I've got the combustion analyzer set up here in the tripod and we're going to go ahead and we'll take a look at some of the readings. Alright so what we're going to do, I'm going to do a flue gas test. The analyzer's already been zeroed so I'm going to go ahead and push start here and uh, enjoy the world's noisiest pump. This is, uh, the mic just picks it up like you wouldn't believe. But we're going to see uh, where everything falls out at. These are probably the most important readings. We got our stack temperature, our O2, our CO, CO undiluted, and we have efficiency. So um, we're set at the manufacturer's um, recommended fuel pressure, and we're just going to do an initial test in, and we'll see see how this appliance is operating. Um, again, we're on high fire, and 
I'll run it down to low fire too and we'll get a low fire reading just to, to see the contrast in there because I'm sure uh, uh, some of the guys out there will want to see that. So we'll give this a couple seconds to stabilize and um, we'll get ourselves a reading here. While we're looking at this here, I'll let you see the, uh, the fuel pressure again. It's still running about 3.54, 3.52. It's uh, fluctuating a tiny bit, but it's sitting right there. Okay, it looks like everything's fairly well stabilized here. Uh, stack temperature's climbing a little bit, but we're going between 34, 35 parts per million CO undiluted. Uh, it's saying there, I'm going to pause the analyzer here for a second. I'm going to go up and uh, turn the furnace down to low fire and uh, we'll get another second set of readings. Alright, so now I've got the uh, furnace that's actually down at 40% of low fire. And you can see our manifold pressure drop down here to uh, 0.67 inches of water column. So considerably lower, and I'm going to start the analyzer back up again, and let's get a second set of results. Now the other thing is too, obviously this is a two-stage uh, draft-induced motor, so when we drop the low fire, we also drop to the low-stage inducer, and. Um, we are seeing a little bit higher CO undiluted. It's definitely climbing. If gross efficiency looks like it's dropping a little bit. We're going to get a few minutes to settle out and see uh, see what happens here. Um, not abnormal for a furnace to fire with a little bit higher uh, CO on low fire, simply because the fuel gear fuel air mixture is not as good. The other thing is you got to look at here is remember we're on a lower fire now, okay? So we're looking at CO undiluted. If you look at the CO itself, it, the CO is still 29 parts per million. What we really had here was a huge increase in excess air. Okay, We have 14.9% O2, which is really, really high oxygen in the flue gases. And we still have about 29 parts per million, but the undiluted CO went way up because now uh, we're being you know, diluted by all the oxygen in the flue gas. If I scroll up here, you can see we've got 200% excess air way more excess air than this furnace needs to operate correctly and I'm guessing if we uh, like I said we're going to find out the factory orifices are a little too small and we'll be able to straighten this furnace out when we get that adjusted so again we're stable um, we're at about uh, 0.67 inches of water column and uh, you know we're, we're at about a hundred well we'll have to stabilize here about 20 30 parts per million CO. It looks good and stable, so we'll go ahead and pause it there. All right, so we're out here at the gas meter now. Furnace is running. I'm going to wait till the half foot dial gets to the bottom and mark. And we're watching the timer go around here. We're going to clock the meter. I'm going to let it go around twice. It's a half foot dial. And uh, so it's going to have to go around two times so we can get a cubic foot of gas out of it. So just got to sit here and wait for a minute. And I've clocked this meter before um, on the uh, on the half cubic foot dial, and it's uh, it's pretty spot on here. So got a lot of confidence in the gas meter. It's actually also a, a new meter head, so this came out and updated my meter here so I could do remote reads on it. We're halfway around and uh, getting ready to stop here in just a second. Mark. Okay, we are at 49 seconds on the button. So, we get the camera to focus on this. Sunshine is bright. All right, 49.0. All right, so what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to, I've got a, a, a gas table to determine the gas input of a gas furnace in, in BTUs. And this table is actually for 1,000 BTUs per cubic foot, so we're going to have to make an adjustment on it. And if we look here, here's the one cubic foot dial, and we take this down until we get to 49 seconds, which is what we had on the clock. We're at 73,000 BTUs of input on this appliance, right? So if we take the, the calculator here now, and we say, okay, well, let's clear this guy out. And we say, well, 1025 
which is the input from the supplier, the heat content I got from the supplier, divided by a thousand equals 1.025 times 73,000 equals. All right. So I'm calculating an input of 74,825 which is way below uh, what the input for this furnace should be. All right? uh, the manufacturer says it's a 90,000 BTU input furnace. We're set at the manufacturer's pressure, but we're so far below the input that's uh, nominal that if we didn't change orifices on this thing, we just end up with higher than normal gas pressure. And uh, you know, I could run that up there and reclock the meter, but uh, we're, we're, what, 15,000 BTUs off just about. So we're going to go ahead and we'll change the orifices out. We'll go back to the manufacturer's pressure and we'll see how close we get and see if we need to make any more adjustment to the appliance. So I'm, I'm guessing by now some of you guys are wondering why in the heck would a furnace be that far under fire from the manufacturer and, and uh, to be quite honest with you it's nothing it's nothing new. Uh, I think Jim Davis uh, was, was probably one of the first guys that made me really aware of how far under fire they were and one of his big beefs was they AGA never tests an appliance as manufactured, and he's absolutely right. I actually got to go to CSA Labs in Cleveland, and uh, I actually asked them about that. And they actually, what they do is they uh, they take the appliance in, and they actually remove the orifices and size the orifices for the heat content of the gas that they're uh, that they have at their factory. Because what they're concerned with on a furnace is not the uh, is not the uh, uh, The, what the what the what the orifices are, they're concerned about the input. They want to make sure they get the right input to the appliance when they test it. Because if the appliance doesn't have the right input, well, then their testing is is uh, no good. So what they want to know is is uh, how's the how's the unit operate as it's manufactured, not how does it operate as it's uh, as it was shipped from the factory. The technician is ultimately responsible for setting up the appliance at the factory, from, from the factory. If you read the instructions of the manual, just like Weber said in there, it tells you that there's an acceptable range of gas pressures. It tells you that it's typically 3.2 to 3.8 and outside of those gas pressures, uh, well you've got to uh, you've, you've got to change the orifices and that's exactly where we're at right here with this. So what I've got here is uh, uh, manifold is stuck. Alright, what I've got here is I've got uh, six brand new orifices. These are uh, number 49s. The ones that were in there are number 50s. I ordered them right from, uh, right from uh, Ream. And we're going to go ahead and swap these out. We're going to uh, check the fuel pressure again, run a combustion analysis again, and check the input. So give me just a minute and I'll take these uh, orifices out. Alright, so I have, the, I have the manifold here loose. And this doesn't really have to be hard. A lot of guys, you know, want to tear everything apart to get to it. And all I did was take the four screws out here, and I broke loose the union, obviously with the gas off. It works better that way. And um, I'm just going to take these orifices out here. And I'd highly recommend when you're taking these things out, you don't drop your screwdriver, and uh, you use a a wrench that is not going to tear things up. Don't use a crescent wrench on these because you want to make sure you get them lined up straight. And you want to make sure that you don't damage the uh, the orifice when it comes in or out. So, just taking these all out, and we'll get these changed. It only takes a couple seconds to change the orifices. This is not a big deal to to do this and to do this right. You know, everybody says, "Oh, how much time are you going to have to do a furnace check?" Well, this is what proper commissioning takes to do. And if we don't do this, the appliance will never run as the manufacturer intended it to. And a lot of times you, you, you can't get the rated efficiency out of it. Because not only does, you know, excess air is a necessary evil, but when we get too much of it, what's going to happen is we're going to dilute those flue gases out. And when we dilute those flue gases, um, what happens is that the furnace can't condense as well as it should. So I've just about got all these out here. And Ahead and get the new ones ready to go in. All right. Now, typically, you don't need to put pipe dope on orifices. Number one, they're already a hole. Uh, number two is, um, especially like Teflon tape, you don't want to get any Teflon in front of that orifice. And uh, these things aren't cranked in; they're tapered, just like a regular pipe plug is. 
So, you know, we're just going to snug these guys in. And uh, it's not like a high pressure area like a, like a, uh, you know, like a pipe or anything like that. So we're just going to snug these guys in and we'll be good to go. Um, you know, this are, these, are, uh, these are an engineered leak already. So, you know, the, the, it's not like we're going to leak gas around our orifices if we don't put pipe to open them. Pipe, pipe threads are self-sealing. And uh, because, like I said, these are on the low pressure side of the manifold, we don't want to take a chance at getting any pipe dope or anything else in the, uh, in the orifice because that will really mess with the flow. Uh, typically don't recommend that you uh, put any pipe dope on these things. If you look, the ones that came out here, I'll show you one in a second here, they don't have pipe dope on them either. So, these ratcheting wrenches are one of the slickest things I think they ever came up with. It makes it a heck of a lot easier to do this kind of stuff. Alright, last one. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this bolt to back up and take me just a second. I don't think you want to watch me do that. I don't want to edit it out. So, I'll uh, be right back to you. Alright, so we got everything bolted back up. One thing I can't stress enough when you're putting the orifices in and changing them, watch you don't crimp your wires in here. I I've done that more times than I care to think about, especially in, like this igniter wire that's way back up in here. It's, it's hard to see in the thing here, but but it's there and just another little trick here uh, all these little screws and stuff that you, you typically tend to lose I actually use a little magnet right here I'll slide on a tag so you can see it and I'll just stick this stuff right to the magnet while I'm working on it so I don't lose that stuff it's a little uh, magnet off of a Sonicare toothbrush so can't have too clean of teeth but I uh, just busted it off the bottom when I get rid of the toothbrush and I save the magnets and I actually use them for stuff like this just so I don't lose the parts when I'm working on them Okay, so we are back up at high fire, and I've got this set at three and a half inches of water column. And you can see again, we got a little fluctuation in the regulator. That's pretty normal. So I'm going to go back to the combustion analyzer. We're going to start it up again, and we're going to see what the combustion tests are at. Now we're at full fire, and again, welcome to the noisiest combustion analyzer in the world. It's the new 330 pump is definitely uh, makes a little more sound, and. Uh, you can see uh, we're running about uh, 14 ppm of CO and 24 ppm undiluted. It's looking fairly good right now. We'll have to let it run for a few minutes to see where that settles out at. Uh, O2 is still a little bit high. I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't clocked the meter yet to check the orifices here. Um, you know, we could now we can we can erupt, maybe adjust that fuel pressure up if the gas is still a little bit low um, towards the 3.8 inch water column range, but. Right now, uh, you know, we're, we're looking a little bit better. Efficiency still running around 90.5%. Um, and this is a 94% a, a efficient furnace. So we're running a little bit lower there than, than uh, we might expect to see. Stack temperature around 120, which is uh, right there where it should be for a 90 plus furnace. And I've been warming up my house quite a bit too, running this furnace the last few minutes so uh, it doesn't surprise me to see that where it's at. I'm going to go ahead and drop her back down to low fire so we can see how the low fire numbers look and uh, I'll be right back. Okay I just dropped her back down to low fire. We we're running about 0 0.64, 0 0.65 before and uh, we're at 40 percent and back to the combustion analyzer here. Um, our CO before was running about 30 parts per million and 104 air free, I believe is what the numbers were. And we're just going to let this settle out for a few minutes, see where we're at. O2 only dropped down a hair, right? Because we're at uh, at 3. Point, uh, or sorry, 14.9. Now we're about 14.5. CO is is looking a little bit better. Um, dropped by about 20 parts per million air free and about four parts per million. Uh, raw CO. Uh, efficiency was running at uh, what was the efficiency gross was 88 percent and we're still right at 88 percent gross efficiency. A little bit of improvement on operation of the appliance. Um, what I want to do next though is I want to check the uh, I want to go out and check the clock the meter at full fire and check the input again. 
Stack temperature's dropping down to around 111, 112. And this is this is real good now because at this lower stack temperature, we're gonna we're gonna start getting more latent heat out of the out of the gas. Um, so you know we're gonna be definitely further down into the condensing range of the natural gas. Uh, again, we're still gonna run high O2 on this because you just can't control the the oxygen in, in a um, in a modulating furnace. Uh, you know, down down to the nth degree. Um, what we're what we're getting here with a modulating furnace not only is uh, efficiency, but we're also getting comfort, right? Because we're we're going to run we're going to run pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and pause this so I don't have to talk over this all the time. But now you can see we're we're back down there. Um, a little bit improvement in the uh, characteristics of the burner. Um, you know, you you would stop and think you go, my gosh, you added more gas in there. We we should we should see higher CO. Well. We're, we're getting a little bit gas, better gas fuel mixture, and uh, we're running a little bit better because of it. So I'm going to go ahead and go outside and clock the meter, and uh, we'll see where we're at next. Okay, we're back out here at the gas meter again, and we're going to go ahead and clock this a uh, second time. And we're going to wait till it gets up to the top here, and we'll start it just so it's easy for everybody to see. Um, it should take a little less time, Mark. Okay, we're started. Should take a little less time this time because uh, we've got larger orifices in there, so the gas meter should go around faster, which means we should end up somewhere below 49 seconds. Um, so we'll see when it goes around what we're at. We're at 22 the first time around, so we'll probably be about 44 seconds, I'm guessing, by the time we're done. Um, I'll take this around here so you guys can see it. We're still counting. Can't do that and block the, the meter here. Darn left-handed guys. Mark. All right, we're at about uh, 43 seconds. 42.7, 43 seconds, we'll call it. All right, so we're going to go back in and recalculate the, uh, the input and see where we're at. All right, so we're back inside here. I got the gas chart out again, and we're going to see what we did to change our input. So we're we're at 43 seconds roughly, and 43 seconds on the one cubic foot dial puts us at 84,000 BTUs. Now again, we have to do the math here to get the gas input right. So we're going to clear this out. We're going to take the gas input from the supplier, 1025. Oops, clear it. 1025 divided by a thousand equals 1.025 times I think it was 86,000 so times 86,000 equals 88,150 so we're still a snudge under fired at this point and let's see if we can get the rest of it out by uh, tweaking up the gas pressure okay we're back to running again here I got the fuel pressure sitting right at three and a half inches of water column and we're starting to settle out on the analyzer so I'm going to let this run for a second and uh, we're going to see where we settle out at. And we know we're still a little bit under fired uh, based off our clock and the meter and our, our known input from our supplier. So I'm going to uh, give this a second to stabilize and I'm going to go ahead and adjust the fuel pressure up. I'm going to take it up to about 3.7 inches is what I'm guessing we're going to end up at because we're not that far under fired, but we are a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and take this all the way up to 3.7. And if you watch our analyzer, what you're going to start seeing is you're going to see some changes in the analyzer. O2 will probably start to drop here. And uh, so the O2 is starting to drop. Our CO, um, air free, is also starting to drop because our O2 is dropping. Our CO is pretty much remaining stable. Okay. Well, we do have a little bit better looking CO and diluted reading. We're going to let this run like this for just a minute and we'll let it stabilize, see, see what it looks like. Not a, not a market difference in here. You know, we're only running 50 ppm of CO. I'm real curious what it's going to be, though, on the low end, which is what I want to check next. So I'm going to let this run for just a second. And initially, on our, on our very... Uh, well, I'll have to go back and look at our initial combustion test. I can't remember off the top of my head what the numbers were. Okay, I'm going to pause this, run upstairs, and drop it down on the low fire. Okay, now we're back down on low fire. Um, 
Not a huge change in fuel pressure at low, it's still running about 0.64 inches of water column. So, you know, we only raised the two tenths on the top end, uh, so it didn't affect the low end obviously very much. So we're going to let that settle out a little bit, see how our CO and diluted looks and see how things settle out. Initial test I believe was 104 parts per million CO uh, air free and 30 parts per million CO raw. And uh, again we're, we're right down there. The blower just slowed down there. You can see our stack temperature's dropping a little bit. CO still 26 or so. Uh, CO's not changing very much if you remember from our test just a second ago. What's changing is our O2 and our O2's changing because uh, obviously with the low fire and on our secondary uh, openings are fixed in size and we just can't get much more um, much more air in there than we have. All right well we're we're back sorry for the delay there if you're watching time on my combustion analyzer darn memory card filled up on the camera just as I was uh, getting ready to wrap things up but I've got the, uh, the furnace closed up here. I'm going to pop this off here with the tripod here just to back up and take a look. i got the furnace all closed up now and uh, we're going to do our final combustion test and see how this thing's running. I set the thermostat back up to 100% and um, I'm going to start the analyzer. I also changed the, uh, the lines. I put a fifth line on there just so you can see the gross and net efficiency and uh, we'll go ahead and yeah, let's see here, finished and start and um, so we give this thing just a second to stabilize we zeroed it before I put the probe in the stack so take this in a little bit there we go all right so we got the uh, fuel pressure set at about 3.7 inches of water column and the house had a chance to cool back off again so we could take a look at you know what's really going on here uh, I had the house close to about 78 degrees when we were doing the last testing we were looking at so this is a little bit more reflective of uh, how the furnace is actually operating and uh, uh, between that and uh, having to wait a few minutes and uh, taking off uh, my daughter because I had the hot water tank off while I was clocking the meter and didn't uh, remember to turn it back on when I was uh, uploading this video so anyway we got that straightened out and this thing just makes all kinds of racket but you can see here, um, we're looking pretty darn good. Uh, you know, we, we talk about all the time that, uh, or I talk about all the time, uh, combustion analyzers efficiency is very representative of the efficiency that we have on the analyzer. And we're right at uh, 93.5 and the furnace is rated at 94% efficient. The net efficiency is the dry gas calculation. And dry gas means that uh, it's sort of like the old Testo standard where they didn't read in the condensing mode because we really can't um, we really can't determine the actual, the true efficiency of an appliance without measuring volume of condensate when we get in a condensing mode. So, you know, this is telling us our combustion efficiency is right there at 90%, 89% combustion efficiency. We're at 112 degree stack temperature, so we're way into the condensing mode. And the analyzer is extrapolating that dead out and saying, okay, well, it's about 93% efficient. And this is a 94% efficient furnace. Uh, I'm going to pause here for a second. I'm going to go down to the label to show you that. Okay, so here's the uh, energy guide label. And again, it's 94.1. And uh, boy, I'd say that analyzer is pretty close on calculating the, uh, the, imp the efficiency of the appliance as far as the analyzer is concerned. Now let's take a look at uh, the end that uh, everybody's probably interested in and what's the output of the appliance. All right, one of the things I wanted to make sure you guys saw here was uh, we're at 1298 CFM with a temperature rise of 58. But take a close look at that return air temp at 79 degrees because we're going to hit that in a second. But I uh, just wanted you to see this, um, the airflow measurement. So we're at 1298 CFM, 58 degrees Fahrenheit, and 79 degree return air. Nice and toasty in the Bergman house tonight. Alright, so let's just wrap this up here. We have a, a 90,000 BTU input furnace and 94.1% AFUE. And if we multiply those together, you'd be at 84,690. And uh, it'll be fairly close to that simply because the furnace, uh, you know, AFUE numbers are always a little bit. Uh, a little bit different than the uh, thermal efficiency but you know we can't account for all the standby losses that we do have like losses through the cabinet and stuff like that so um, 
feel pretty confident with that number there. If we took that uh, 1.08 times, or 1298 times 58, well, our measured output would be at uh, 81307. So that's a uh, parent loss of about 3300 BTUs, or 4%, right? If we screw around here and do the corrections for air density, now uh, we've we come to figure out the constants 1.05 now instead of 1.08, um, simply uh, 0.24 uh, BTUs per pound times the, the corrected air density. So that comes out to 0 0.0728 times 60 is 1.05. And uh, then what we'd have to back figure out is our airflow. So um, if we if we wanted to have this output, this 84, 9, 84 690, if we divided that by 1.08 divided by 58, we would really be looking for an airflow of around 1,352. Okay, that's, um, but if you look up here, obviously we only measured 1,298, and that airflow would directly impact our measured output because it's just multiplied through. Well, if we correct that, and we say, okay, well, at, at 1,298 divided by 0.075, that's 97.35 pounds per of air per minute. If we correct that and say, well, the, the actual air density was 0 0.0728, so how many pounds did we actually move through there? Well, that comes out to 1,337 CFM. So we're really quite close here once you correct for the airflow, and that comes out to about 81,293 actual BTUs output, or still right there at 96% uh, total efficiency. So uh, very happy with those numbers when we're done. I mean, and it, what I wanted to show you and what I hope they showed you was, uh, number one, a, a combustion analyzer uh, can calculate and does calculate the AFUE or, you know, those those numbers uh, pretty darn close. Uh, second thing I hope you, you got out of this is that if we get the input correct and, uh, uh, you know, we, we set up the furnace the way the manufacturer says it we're supposed to, it does produce the correct output, and there should be no question about that. And the correct way of doing it is to uh, resize the orifices as needed and stay within the manufacturer's prescribed uh, fuel pressures. Uh, no reason to, to do it otherwise. This is the correct way, and, and hopefully you guys uh, got a little bit out of this. Uh, took me a little while to do it because I'm not a great video editor and uh, trying to figure out how to get all this stuff done was a challenge but uh, at the end of the day uh, I hope you guys got a little out of it because I know I did and uh, appreciate you taking the time. Thanks.